Previously on the Adventure Zone, the door opens and exiting from it is a young orc woman who is holding uh, the biggest crossbow any of you have ever seen. What's your name, dear? My name is Killian. Lying precariously towards uh, close to the edge of the pit, you see the Gundren. one, the only Gundren Rockseeker. Gundren. Gundren. Um, and uh, across from her is a drow, a, a dark elf. Who are you? I'm, I'm the black spider. What is your, uh, what's your Christian name? It's Brian, darling. Don't tell me, are you here also for the... No. I shout, Abraka, fuck you! <laughs> and I, I cast magic missile at him. Okay. I'm going to die now. <laughs> I'll drink up all the potions that you've got on your shelf. So just let me introduce myself. It's the Adventure Zone. So there's a big door. Is it the only exit? The one that the yeah. Well, I'll there? set up. I'll set up the scene. Okay. I'll start with some word magic. Um, <laughs> that's just how I like wordomancy. Um, so the the three of you have just finished a very intense uh, battle with. Uh, We're two, all eating a power bar and drinking you're some all, Gatorade. You're eating some Luna bars to just like get your your vitamins, your minerals. Uh, essential oils, all all from these wonderful Luna Bars. This week's episode is sponsored by Luna Bars. They're like Cliff Bars, but they won't make you as constipated. Uh, so, so you've just finished this battle. Um, Killian uh, comes out from. She was hiding behind the uh, the open giant iron rot door uh, because she had been disarmed. She walks out and sort of surveys the scene, and you can tell she is incredibly impressed. She says, "I." cannot believe you guys pulled that off the, the brian magic brian is one of the most accomplished powerful wizards i have ever met in all of my days i i am flabbergasted frankly that we all did not perish well yep. you're, you're welcome <laughs> i guess i guess we're pretty much rad she uh walks over to the edge of the pit and looks down and goes um uh if you'll excuse me i need to recover something very quickly uh None of you go anywhere. She looks Hold at up. all of all of you and Gundren. Hold up. Before All right, Killian, before you go anywhere, what is all of this about? I promise I will tell you as soon as I am literally able to. Right right now I I I I absolutely can't. It, it's Sounds not that legit. I I want to. No, listen. I I have a little bit of um of uh expertise with the magics. Uh, I'm assuming this is some sort of uh, curse that's preventing a. You're not even. You're super, super wrong. Place. You're like super Listen, duper wrong. Let me roll to see if I'm right. Okay. Oh, it, it, it came I, up R. On. I'm it looking came up R for right. Uh, she reaches into uh, her sack and pulls out a feather duster, and she says "BRB" and taps herself with it. And Sorry, just to clarify, faint. does she say BRB? Yeah, she says BRB, okay. uh, AFK. Uh, she she taps herself with the feather duster and is uh, her her silhouette is is sort of surrounded by a faint gray light, and she jumps into the pit. Um, and you see her uh, as long as you can see her before she is uh, enveloped by the pit. Uh, she's falling very slowly. Uh, okay, in, I, I turn to Taco and Merle. Okay, here's the thing, fellas. There's definitely something, there's a thing that they're talking about that we can't, like, mentally comprehend, right? I ha- right. We have to find out what's going on. There's some other level to this cave. Why do they need his blood? Okay. What I, is going on? Gundren well, stands I- up, he's, he's bedraggled, and he says, uh, I might be able to uh, elucidate you. Uh, oh, thank goodness. I What's his health condition? Bad. It's very bad. He also uh, smokes two packs a day. I I I drink MGD sixty four. Oh uh, no! Three, I drink a six pack a day, and then I eat the bottles. 
I'm real, real fucked up over here. <laughs> I've um, been eating corning insulation for years. Freddie says, um, but uh, you guys have done well. Much better than, uh, I'll be honest, much better than I thought you were. This, this job has brought some unforeseen circumstances, but you guys followed through. And where's Barry, by the way? Oh, he's good. He's hanging out back at the bar. Typical Barry, right? That's he Barry. said he said he had to wait for his order of chicken wings, and then he'd meet right up with us. That motherfucker loves him some chicken wings. <laughs> uh, just uh, t- I might need your help still. Come, come with me. And Can he I starts- ask an out of character question? Why does no one besides Griffin and I have character voices? It would really make this a whole lot easier. I, I, I am a whole lot character less voice. unlistenable. That's just what Travis sounds like, Magnus. Yep. And well, I would. I think you'll find that Magnus and Travis have a lot in common. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Vis-a-vis battle axes. Um, and, and love of dogs. Uh, so Gundren leads you through these giant uh, uh, open iron rot doors, uh, which opens up into a large chamber where, where uh, uh, Renee, the jackhammer bot, was being stored. Mm-hmm. Um, and through another smaller, uh, more normal set of doors and into a... A uh, very short tunnel that opens up into uh, an- another uh, room that is uh, the defining feature, I would say, of which is on the far wall a large um, round metal door. Uh, and-, and this one looks a little bit more complicated than the one that you uh, that you just passed through. This one has um, some some gears uh, peeking through, sort of the 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 metal casing of the door. Um, it looks like a pretty uh, sophisticated contraption. Um, and I want all of you to make uh, perception checks. Wait. Uh, 12. Natural 18 plus 3, 21. 19. Okay. Taco, uh, in the corner of this room, uh, you actually see a figure that is sort of huddled down. And as you approach it, um, you can kind of get a better... Uh, appraisal of of what this figure is. It is a uh, skeleton that okay. is sort of sitting comfortably. Uh, it looks like it was positioned comfortably uh, in the corner of this room, just sitting with its back up against a wall. It is draped in a bright crimson robe and holding uh, what looks to be some sort of cane with a, a, a you know curled end. Um, in one hand that is uh, a bit obscured by its robe. It's a bit tucked into its robe, um, but it's just sitting there. But whoever this was, they have been dead for uh, a very long time. Uh, and and Gundren kind of just looks at that figure um, and walks over to the door and starts uh, starts looking looking at it, looking inside the, the machinery. Griffey, do. do we need to roll to see how comfortably he's sitting? He looks like he was chill. It looked like maybe he just sort of sat here uh-huh. And was kicking it and just sort of wasted away. Is there are there any clothes or anything besides just the bones there? Or is there any like distinction? that's what's that's what's weird? It's just the robe. Any any clothes that this person had on is gone. Uh, it's just the the robe and the uh, cane that it's uh, holding. Okay, I want to check out the robe. Uh, I search the I'll search the robe for any any clues or anything. Um, you look over the robe. It just seems to be a plain. A plain robe. You can't really figure out how it survived when the rest of this person's clothing sort of eroded away. But there are, there's nothing tucked away in the pockets. Or, Where is or the anything. skeleton looking? Uh, the skeleton is actually looking towards the entrance that you guys walked in through. Can uh, I check out the cane? You can, sure. What do, what are you che- what are you doing? I, well, haven't, I, need, I haven't told I mean, him about this guy yet. Well, that's a good point. Justin Taco is the only one who's sort of uh, seen, seen this figure. Dad, there's a guy over here with a cane. Is your father He's your here? Dan? Okay. Uh, excuse me, whichever one you are, the d- dwarf, uh, there's a cane here to look at. Oh, I'll check it out. No, that won't do. <laughs> the sound, oh, no, no the, the mouth words that you just made there can't be a sound I'm How come you can have a voice I like have that? to sit next to you. Well, you're sitting next no, to me. I literally sit next to you. I can't, blah, 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 blah. I can't handle that, right, literally. I'll go check out the cane. It's getting worse. <laughs> 
entire Toms of Maine. I I don't need a, 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 a that voice. Nothing. None of it. Okay. All okay. While Laverne and Shirley argue in the corner, I'm gonna turn okay. I'm gonna to check you. out the cane. He's gonna check out the cane. Uh, I can I Griffin. This is a weird question, so I will ask it uh, to you. Is there are are there like is there any way to know if there's like the robes were taking with me like if there's stats or something stats on it uh yeah i mean when you sur- surveyed it you sort of figured out that it's just just kind of a robe okay is there any kind of like sense magic or something that wizards can I do i have sense there's magic. there's an arcane there's a check spell there's there's a, a, i have a detect magic spell but i don't really want to do it you also i think i would have yeah, gotten a vibe up, up, up. you also have an arcana check that you can make oh i'll make an arcana check why not Okay. It just seems to me that there's something about this staff and robe that why is everything else rotted away, oh, but it's see. remained. Uh, arcane. Oh my! Probably pretty good. Uh, I got a one, so I don't know if it's. I try to eat it, and okay. I can't. Since I'm looking at, it, can I do an arcana check? Yeah, sure. Screw it. I got a two. Okay. <laughs> what, what's you your can, pluses? Can quite. Uh, none of you can quite figure this out. Wait, Figure I'm going to roll this. now. Hold on. You're going to make a fucking arcana check. I got an 11. Okay, it's magical, the cane. I'm going to take the cane. <laughs> wait, okay. hold on. Just because it's magic doesn't mean it's good magic. All right, wait a minute. I know what you're going to say, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm oh. going to cast detect magic. Okay. Would that not identify the magic? Use your action. I already told you it's a magic You cane. learn it's school of magic, if any. Um, You cast detect, detect magic on the cane, and... Your your mind starts to sort of swirl. You get like dizzy and and faint because uh, detect magic is a pretty pretty basic spell uh, that you've used uh, uh, quite a few times, but you've never really gotten a response from it like this because the response you got was everything. It's it's all all schools of magic. It's all of the magic that there is seems to be uh, somehow embedded in this cane. Cool. Cool. All right. So what did you what did you what kind of vibe did you get from it? Well, I'll tell you, Pilgrim. That's... I'm dying. I'm literally <laughs> dead. Rest in peace. You were the one who wanted character voices. I take it all back. <laughs> um, Taco didn't. Justin did. I'm a. I'm kind of mind blown right now. It's like kind of hard for me to to concentrate. I think I ought to wrap this in something and carry it instead of holding on. Well, wrap it in the robe. That's a good idea. Oh, let's wrap it in the robe. Wrap it in the robe. All right, I'll wrap it in the robe. And bring it along. Even through the robe, as soon as you touch the cane, you feel a sort of jolt go through your body. Um, and like the I, soft drink? Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, and I want you to actually enter into an intellect contest with the cane. So Fine. you're going to roll a d20 and add your intellect uh, modifier. All right, hold on one second. Oh, Jesus, good luck. 19. I Plus. also rolled a 19. Wait, wait, uh, wait, he's got an intelligence modifier, right? Uh, yeah. Zero. Zero. Uh, the cane has a plus two, so the cane actually beat you out. Um, you are flung backwards by a wave of force, and you just sort of thunk into the far wall of the room, and you're going to take uh, one one d four damage from that. Oh golly! Uh, that's two damage that you take. So it, it almost feels like the cane has rejected you. Let me give it a whirl. I'll try the exact same thing that he just did. Okay, okay I want to paint a picture for what just happened. So Merle grabs it, gets flung across the room, and takes damage. And Taco goes, "My turn!" and <laughs> just reaches for it. <laughs> I, I live like I'm dying. Let's try it. Ow! Let's do this. You're okay. fine. Ow! Walk it off. Walk it off. Uh, okay, you have a much better chance this time. I would like uh, also like to picture that the whole time this having Magnus well. is just looking at the door as a door flies across the room behind him. Um, what did you get? Twelve. Okay, I only got a six. Um, so you you have bested this cane, um, and suddenly it's almost like the 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 goddamn quickening happens in this room. Uh, the, there are bolts of of lightning shooting out of Taco as he pulls this cane from the grip of the skeleton. Um, and as you remove it from where it sort of had it um, enveloped in its robe, as you pull it out, you realize that uh, it wasn't actually the end of a cane. It was the handle of an umbrella. 
and you pull this umbrella from uh, the the skeleton's grasp, um, the skeleton actually looks up at you, almost like it's acknowledging your presence. And as you finally rest it from its grasp, the skeleton and the bright crimson robe uh, both disintegrate into ashes. So now I have an umbrella. I'm in a lot of pain over here. Uh, you're a cleric, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, Walk it off. Gun- <gasps> you realize that Gundren is sort of looking at Taco agape like, what the shit? What the shit was all that lightning stuff about? And the magic umbrella? You guys are crazy. Oh, hey, nice at, umbrella. I'll, I look at Gundren and I say, handle it. <laughs> That's how I do. Okay, so Gundren says, uh, Gundren puts his hand on the door. And very slowly, the gears of the door start turning. Um, and, and while those gears are turning, he looks at you and says, you guys deserve some answers. Yeah. Please. And some my, money. Well, maybe. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, my father. Wait, hold one second. Uh, I have a thing called Zone of Truth. Okay. <laughs> sure you do. In the... Zone of truth. It's a 15-foot radius. I got to tell you, this. I think it's important we get the truth that's, out of my No, I think that's a great play. Go for it. Okay. Yeah. All right. I have to... <laughs> you, uh, say, you say, hold on one second, Gundren. Uh, excuse me for a second. Achoo, zone of truth. <laughs> <laughs> I try to hide it under your breath. All right. So did what does that say, uh, zone of truth? I did. Shit. I meant to lie. Ah. Uh, he's got to make a charisma saving throw. Okay. Um, he's probably not especially charismatic. We'll see. He has a plus zero. What does he have to beat? Um, hold on. Probably a 13, right? So he's, uh, you rolled a four. Plus zero is four. So he's telling the truth now? Okay. Okay. Uh, whoa. Did you guys feel that? <laughs> uh, feel what? Nope. Well, nope. you would have to tell the truth. No, only he's feeling it. Is it is it targeted or is it everybody in the zone? Are we all telling the everybody truth? Everybody in a fifteen foot radius. Uh, damn it! Has to. <laughs> Did you just cast some sort of magic spell on me? Yes. <laughs> okay, that's weird. I don't really caught into that, but uh, well, I'm pissed off because you're the one that sent us on this mission to get our asses kicked. Because you, you just admitted you didn't think we could do it. You've got every right. Listen. We got to get through this fucking episode. Yeah, I um, stole a bunch of gold. I stole a bunch of gold. And there was a, he, <laughs> did. He, gold. He, he did. I wasn't supposed to see him, but I saw it. Wait, I, I, there was is a this compulsive gold. truth, or is it just like when we speak? I I I opened my mouth to lie about gold. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to remark about how we hadn't found any gold this whole time, and how we were really upset about it. But I'm sorry, I found a bunch of gold in here. Gundren, of the gold. Gundren gives. I'm a, having a really great time, and I think we're becoming closer as friends. Gundren looks over Magnus. He's like, "That's very sweet. Your boots look weirdly familiar. Where did you get those? <laughs> they were given to me as a boots. gift. Shut up, Taco." You stole your magic boots, too. Nope. <laughs> oh, those were Tharden's magic boots, I think. Oh, I hate... We, we I stole hate, Tharden's magic boots. I, He's dead. I hated that guy. Keep him. Yeah, I know. I'm not crazy about that. Anyway, exposition time. Uh, my father, Cyrus Rockseeker, was my, the... My uncle. Your uncle, yes, was uh, in charge of security for Wave Echo Cave. And when the orc marauders came to uh, destroy Fandolin and seek out the Wave Echo Cave and take it over, he managed to very heroically lock away all of the magical items, magical weapons, uh, equipment, trinkets, everything, away in the mine's uh, personal vault, which is here behind me. Uh, Unfortunately, in order to do so, he also had to lock himself in, so he... Sadly, sacrifice himself. You okay? You know, for, for a zone of truth, you're using a lot of adverbs. How do you know it's sadly? That's I was, truth. That's I objective. Was, I was a bit sad about it. Fine. Some would say sadly. Uh, he sacrificed himself to lock away all of the treasures of this vault. So he uh, goes all Scrooge McDuck. How long ago? Uh, this was uh, about a decade ago. Damn those orc marauders. Yeah, there's no way that I'm going to open this door and have a happy family reunion. But fortunately... I lean over to Taco. Can you eat gold to stay alive? 
no answer to that. Okay. Just too too dumb too dumb to answer. <laughs> too dumb. I was worried that if I answered, he might respond, <laughs> and that would pro- prolong the conversation. Um, even for a second. The door makes a few definitive clunks, and uh, Gundren says, "Fortunately, uh, this door is attuned to rock seeker blood, um, so uh, I can open it up." And we can have ourselves a field day with the treasures and weapons and everything within. Mm-hmm. I just want to point out to him that a few minutes ago, pee works too, as we found out at the spring. He could pee on the door if he wanted to. Yeah, so if you need to pee. I'm totally cool. Thanks for asking, though. Kind of a weird question. Kind of a weird request. <laughs> uh, I'm regretting letting you guys into this with uh, every passing second, but... Um, Anyway, here we go. Uh, too much honesty. The door rolls open, um, revealing a very small passageway uh, that, unlike the rest of this cave, is actually kind of dark. You remember the, the rock walls of the rest of this cave are sort of illuminated. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they sort of have a natural, magical glow about them. Um, but, but for some reason, uh, whatever's at the end of this cave, it, uh, this passageway is pitch black. And he says, uh, well, here we go. Uh, and starts to walk on through. Okay, some kind of light source in in the tunnel may be a good idea. Is that your voice? Is that's that my Magnus voice. Be? I just, oh, I think, I think I'm I'm making a DM decision, trademark DM decision right now. That Taco's the only one that gets a voice. <sighs> okay, fine. Wait a minute. Nope, it's decided. Um, All right, I'm I'm going to cast light. It's a can trip. Okay, it gives a twenty foot radius around us. Okay. Uh, brightly, and then another 20 feet dimly. And just because I can, uh, I make it a pale uh, lavender. <laughs> How nice. That's nice. I could, I could choose Calming. the color. That's really, really romantic. Um, okay, so the four of you uh, walk down this passageway, and as you step foot into the vault's main chamber, um, you notice... A lot of very strange things very quickly. The first of which is, uh, as you step foot into the chamber, the sound from the the ground underneath is not the sort of soft crunch that you've uh, sort of come to expect from the the cave uh, and mine floor. Uh, it's like a like a plink. Like hold on, I've got a glass here, so like that. Uh, and you look down and realize that you are in fact walking on black glass almost Mm. like obsidian and as you look around you realize that that is actually the composition of this entire chamber it is a large i would say about 60 feet uh in diameter uh almost dome shaped room uh that is completely made out of um of of obsidian it looks like or black glass Mm -hmm. Uh, and Gundren looks up and says, something's not right, and starts to walk in towards the center of the chamber. Um, and as you move towards him, you see uh, a, a single figure that uh, is uh, dwarven in shape, but it's so badly burned, uh, burned, burned all the way through, almost like charcoal, with one hand um, sticking up in the air, uh, with on its hand a silvery glove, a silvery gauntlet. Okay. Uh, what? I high five him. <laughs> okay, you you reach over and high five the silvery gauntlet. Say bro in dwarvish. And how do you? And what is that? Say bro in dwarvish. Well, I'm asking that. I'm asking you to bust that out for me. Okay, bushka. I think that's actually Russian or Klingon or Klingon <laughs> for okay. big wolf. Um, orb. Okay, Say orb. So you you high five this uh, this silvery gauntlet, um, and uh, a, a spout of flame actually comes out of the uh, gauntlet and burns your hand, mm-hmm. um, and you actually uh, take two damage. Okay, fire good, damage. Good going, dipshit. <laughs> Sounds about right. Uh, Gundren starts to look over this dwarven figure and says, uh, "As my pa- that, sorry, just to clarify, is the figure like moving alive? No, it's it's would- dead as fuck, super okay. dead, super burned up. Okay. Um, he he looks at it and goes, "That's my pops. That's my dad. Do you know anything about the glove he's wearing? I, it seems like some sort of magical artifact, but everything in this uh, this room is supposed to be filled with with magic weapons and and." Uh, 
it, impossible armaments that... Uh, I don't understand what's going on. He's getting very, very, very angry. I noticed. And that was almost a voice. Cal- calm down. There, I'm allowed Taco. to use voices. It's just, just, just not you guys. Um, except for Taco. Because he's, he's found it. You know what I mean? Once you've found your voice, you can bring it to the table. But this All is, right. this is not see, workshop time. Do I see anything else in the room? No. We wait, wait. need a perception check. You, is you, there another exit? Is there just the one door? Just the it? one door. It's a vault. So so it would only have the one very secure door that you already passed through. Um, but no, this this lone, uh, crusty, crumbly figure w- wearing the gauntlet is... is uh, and, and the very sort of epicenter of this room is the only thing here. Okay. Uh, um, I, don't I, high-five I wanna... it. Uh, got it. Uh, I, I want to get the uh, the umbrella near the glove and see if there's any kind of reaction or if I get any sort of magical vibe of a connection between the two. Um, okay, yeah, you you whip out the umbrella and you point it uh, at the at the glove, um, and there doesn't seem to be any kind of response between. Try flipping between it open two. a couple times. Uh, you hear from behind you a voice go, "What did I tell you?" See. I know who that is. You turn around and it's Killian, and and she is, uh, she looks very disappointed in all four of you. Killian says, "I told you guys to stay put. Don't. Uh, I don't understand why you keep being so difficult. I don't understand why any of you are here. Um, we got bored. <laughs> you left for it was like like four hours. For, it felt like it was like, it was like minutes. It, it was a minute and a half." We got bored. It was 90 whole seconds. You guys couldn't stand still for 90 whole seconds. I don't know, why do you do the good. stuff you do? I, I, yeah. Like try to kill us. Yeah, we didn't think it would be a good podcast. Um, <laughs> I know she, what you're thinking. She um, <laughs> Goodbye, fourth wall. <laughs> she she surveys the room and sees the gauntlet in the middle and says, and, and pulls out her crossbow and says, everybody, very slowly... None of you have high five that thing, have you? No. <laughs> no. Oh, God, no. <laughs> are we still in the circle of truth? <laughs> no, you're... Yeah, yeah, are we still within 15 feet of where we were? No, no, no. That was in the other room. Um, uh, she says, everybody step... O- that is... That's what I came here looking for. It is indescribably dangerous. Everybody step away from the enchanted gauntlet, please. You have clarify. to be a complete idiot did to we, high five it. Did we get a verdict on high fiving it? Definitely <laughs> a thumbs down. Um, it didn't seem to work out so great for Magnus. Well, maybe it's supposed to be a low five. Huh? <laughs> I've Gund- solved it. <laughs> Gundren is standing very close to the gauntlet, and he looks at Killian and says, Are you guys here with this filthy orc? Hey, Whoa, geez, hey. Geez. Hey, cheese with the cool. racism, Gundro. <laughs> um, we're all just we're all just one brotherhood of man. And Killian's it's an orcist. Killian says, uh, it was orcist. It was." Killian says, uh, "Did you just call me filthy, dude?" Hey, everybody, um, we're gonna take just two steps back, real quick. Uh, Gundren says, uh, "This gauntlet, everything in this vault, is my birthright. There's no way I'm giving this thing up to you." And Killian says, uh, don't test me. Don't test me. Had a real long day. I got all webbed up in the other room. Hated that. Gosh, Griffin doesn't even need us anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'm we're just, just standing up to the side doing like the tennis match. Look back and forth. Like, how's this going to play out? Um, Gundren says, uh, boys, you've served me very well. I have one last job for you. I need you to take her out. And Killian says, hold up. Not so sure about that decision. Doesn't seem like a good one. No, hold, stop. Everybody stop. Gundren, do you know why this room is empty and there's a gauntlet on the dude's hand? I don't know why this is the only thing in this room. Okay, but I cool. know that it's mine. Killian, do you know why that is? I have a pretty good goddamn idea. Yeah. Okay, okay Killian, so well, Gundren, how about we chill the fuck out and we find out what's going on? Killian, are you able to talk to us freely at this point? I can't. I can talk to you as much as you want. Here, do you want, here, uh, this might answer your question. That thing is called the... Mm-hmm. So, so yes. It's called the maracas sound. 
So I'm not I'm not great with subtlety or comedy. It's not called the Maraca sound. I can't tell you what it is. Gundren, step off. You are done. You're done. We're done here. Um, and Gundren says, or better idea. And Unless. he reaches over very quickly, snatches it up, and puts it on his right hand. Okay, this goes well. Um, and the his dad uh, crumbles over, uh, and he says, uh, oh, man, I feel really bad about... And he is engulfed in flame. I regret this immediately. But very quickly, the flames subside, and he's not dead. He's he, fine. He's not all burned up. He's... I wouldn't say he's fine. It's his hair is standing on end almost. Like are you um, serious? A little bit Yahoo. Yeah, I mean that is his hairstyle. Okay. Gundren, how do you feel? I feel powerful. Pretty. I feel so pretty <laughs> and witty. Um and Killian says, "Well, shit." And shoots her crossbow at Gundren. Uh but he puts his hand out, the hand with the gauntlet in, and the the projectile burns up before it can reach him. Um, cool. Killian says, everyone get away from the fiery dwarf now. Um, so we have to choose. I charge the dwarf. Uh, try, okay. Merle, you charge the dwarf, um, and as he sees you, you mean coming. Magnus? Oh, sorry. It's like the choice has been made. Magnus, you charge the dwarf, um, but just as he sort of stopped that projectile, he puts his hand out and knocks you back with a fiery wave of force. Um, and I you, take how much damage? You take uh, uh, five damage, actually. Okay. Holy crap. Mm-hmm. Uh, you go sliding across the glass floor, and he says, I'm done with this. He says, it's payback time. Um, and he, quick, quick as a, a cricket. What's the thing? What's a fun idiom for things that move quickly? Bunny. A quick, a quick as a child's wish. He... Um, <laughs> Uh, flies out of the chamber through the door you came in uh, uh, and it just sort of surrounded almost like he himself has turned into a, a, a dwarven fireball he goes flying out of the room and Killian says that went about as shitty <laughs> as it possibly could have gone great great job you three <laughs> and Angus sits up and says I almost had him she says, we need to get him, and we need to find him, and we need to stop him before he destroys the whole world. Okay. Y'all down? Super clear. Sure. Well, okay. I'm not going to lie. This is super above your pay grade. Hey, uh, Killian, I'm, de- I'm detecting that that glove was magical. Yeah. <laughs> Again, very, very studious. You are a pa- very powerful wizard to pick up. <sighs> Well, thank you. I, oh, she's invoked. By the, the way, I have sarcasm. I haven't told you guys this. I made a character choice. Oh, what's that? Ta- Taco's an idiot. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's a wizard. He is dumb as hell. So when he saw that glove, once he th- once he flew out in a big fireball, that is when it clicked in his head that that might be magical. That might so be he's, magical. He's very fact. learned. But a, a little learned. bit not quick on Should the, he maybe, on the is uptake. It, is it possible that Dumb maybe he was destined to be a different class? Like maybe right. he was more suited for like the barbarian lifestyle. He was so he was so stupid that he went into the wrong area <sighs> at Hogwarts, and he was just like, <laughs> the, I guess magic." The Sorting Hat was like, "You should be like a lumberjack or so, something," um, and you're like, "No, I want a magic." And so that's where uh, you are. Yeah, exactly. Where were we at? Glad we have that backstory now. Saving the world. Right. Hey, everyone. This is your Dungeon Master, Griffin McElroy, with a really quick mid-episode break. Not a lot to talk about this week. Not a whole lot of new announcements. Uh, but just wanted to give some information about the show because otherwise it would be weird if Merle was like, check out our Tumblr. Um, that's my impression of my own dad, I guess. I've never really done it before, so that was live. I announced this last week, but if you haven't checked it out yet, we have a website, uh, theadventure.zone. Uh, i seen a few people say on Twitter it doesn't load. That's because you put in adventure.zone, and we were not fortunate enough to grab that prestigious URL. 
It's theadventure.zone. It's going to take you to our Tumblr where we have a bunch of really cool fan art, uh, a couple of character sheets, um, some info about the game and the the show that we do. Um, Hopefully when we get a little bit more free time, we'll be able to keep that more consistently updated. But right now that's sort of your source for uh, when we publish new episodes and info about the game itself. Uh, We are on Twitter at TheZoneCast. If you want to tweet about the show, use the hashtag TheZoneCast, not TazCast. We've abandoned that hashtag because it sucked. We've also got a Facebook fan page. Uh, It's just The Adventure Zone. You can find it on Facebook, the way that you find fan pages, which I guess is you search for them. But we've had a few people post some pretty great stuff in there. So if you're looking for even more ways to socialize with us digitally, uh, there's there's one for you right there. I've also had a few people this past week tweet at us asking why we didn't do an episode last week. Uh, I, I probably haven't been super clear about this, but we are doing episodes uh, twice a month, every other Thursday. Uh, that means that by the time you're hearing this, the next episode that's going to go up is January 29th. Um, so yeah, we skip a week and we've also had a few people ask if the show could become a weekly thing. Honestly, right now, no, uh, just because it takes a shocking amount of time to, uh, prep this for, for me to, you know, be the DM and put the story and everything together. It takes a while. Uh, and then we record for a super long time and editing all that down, uh, takes, takes a long time. Also, there's four of us. Um, so, you know, scheduling more play sessions is kind of tricky for us right now. So right now it's going to stay every two weeks. And if that looks like it's going to change, you will be the first to know. I want to say a huge thanks to Glenn Weldon, uh, on pop culture, happy hour, uh, the great NPR podcast, uh, for recommending the adventure zone on the latest episode. Um, we really appreciate it. And we've had a lot of people say that they found the show through that. If you're one of those people, thank you. Thanks for tuning in. And if you're not one of those people, thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Um, we have had a really, really, really great start. I'm, I'm kind of flabbergasted at, at, at how well uh, the show's doing, how many people are tuning in. We could still use your help if you want to uh, kick in, you know, a, a, an iTunes review uh, or, uh, you know, just a recommendation to a friend or tweeting about the show. Uh, I don't think we did any Twitter names this week, but uh, next week's episode, I think we have one. And then uh, the, the episode after that, we're going to have a ton because um, it is it is exposition time, y'all. Um, but thank you all very much for, for tweeting about and recommending the show. If you want to keep doing that, we super, super duper appreciate it. One last thing, if you do want to uh, donate to the show, become a Maximum Fund subscriber and support our community of podcasts, uh, which includes things like My Brother, My Brother and Me, Sawbones and Bunker Buddies, three other shows that uh, myself, Justin and Travis all do. Well, some of us do some of them. It's complicated. Uh, But we are all on that network, and so are, like, more than a dozen truly fantastic shows like Jordan, Jesse Go, Oh No, Ross and Carrie, The Goose Down, a lot of really terrific shows on the network. I love being a part of it. We've been a part of it for years now, uh, and it is just a great home and an amazing source of free entertainment. Um, If you want to become a supporter, you can go to MaximumFun.org forward slash donate. Uh, and you can find all kinds of details about how you can help us make a little bit of money off this thing. Anyway, that's enough for me. We're going to get back to the adventure. Um, I know I said last week that this was going to be the last episode in this particular story arc, but uh, actually we have one more just because the session went very long. So uh, next week's episode is going to be the last one in this first story arc that we have titled Here There Be Gerblins. And then the two weeks after that, we're on to something new. Well, same characters and everything, um, same campaign, just the next chapter, because that's how we're organizing it. Anyway, that's enough. Uh, back to the story, back to the, the full crew. Thank you all for listening, and enjoy. The four of you... Uh, Killian and, and you three uh, backtrack through Wave Echo Cave pretty effortlessly. There are no extra bonus jellies for you to spar with. Um, you make your way out, um, and uh, it's pretty easy to track Gundren's movements through the cave um, because he has left a charred path behind. He him. has gone Super Saiyan. He's basically gone Super Saiyan. Um, only firier, I mm-hmm. guess. More Bernie. Um, like weekend at Bernie's? <laughs> kind of. Um, you, you you all make it out of Wave Echo Cave and um, to find him congoing on the beach because music is playing. <laughs> yeah, huh? Andrew Andrew McCarthy is Andrew McCarthy. What is that mm-hmm. dog's name? Yeah. Yep. And the single guy and no, Silverman. Silverman Steve Gutenberg. <laughs> um, 
You all managed to follow the path out of Wave Echo Cave, and that was that was not a Steve Gutenberg film. That was gluten free. <laughs> Oh, man, my joints really lock up when I see a Steve <laughs> Gutenberg movie. It's really painful. Uh, so, so you make it out of the cave, um, and his fiery war path um, extends beyond the cave. Uh, you, you manage, with Killian's help, because the three of you are dullards that can't, like, follow a, a path of blazing fire. Uh, you, now, you hold on. To- hold on. I don't want to make this character choice for everyone. That's okay. Taco's character. That's Taco's character. Uh, Magnus, you're actually the smartest one of the bunch, which seems yeah. unlikely. All your class uh, well, choices. I don't want to make that character choice either. If only you guys could sort of rotate classes one to the right. I think you all would probably be a lot better off. But uh, you follow the fiery path, um, uh, and after a few would miles, you call it, would you call it a swath of destruction? A swath of burn. I mean, all that he's destroyed is like some planes. Okay. So um, there are planes. There are planes. Like yeah. you, you're you're trekking back, and after a few miles, you realize that uh, this this path that he this trail he is literally blazing um, is heading back towards Fandolin. I knew it. Uh-oh. Uh oh. He's going for Barry Blue Jeans, you guys. You think he's going to kill Barry? He's he has to assassinate Barry Blue Jeans. No, That's I think he's going to go form up like Barry's his buddy. He's going to go pick up his teammate. Killian says this is this is bad. We can't let him get. If he gets to Fandolin, it's going to be pretty horrible. We we, we got to stop him before he gets there. Um, the the four of you are in the cart, by the way, that you borrowed from Barry Blue Jeans um, that that you rode to Wave Echo Cave. So you're making pretty good time. You're not exactly sure the speed comparison between magic fireballs and wagons. fireball dwarf and and a a, a <laughs> wagon, but uh, you think you're making pretty good time. Why doesn't um, why doesn't Killian just use her magic feather duster to make us all lighter so then it moves faster? It doesn't work like that, she says. Stop. Okay. Stop thinking you know how magic things work. You've proven pretty inept at it. Um, can we high five the cart to make it go faster? You can try. Yes. If that she's she's just exasperated. Yeah, oh yeah, that'll do it. Oh, yes, you're saving the day, Magnus. Keep high-fiving the cart, I guess. Keep high-fiving the... <laughs> I'm doing it as hard as I can. Good. This is not a joke. I can't sleep on Magnus. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't. I can't. Okay. I can't. I can't. All right. It, it instantly works. It's four, five, nine, ten, fourteen. Nope. <laughs> yep. <laughs> How many hit points do you have? Seventeen. Oh, uh, there's wait. I forgot. There's one more. <laughs> Eight. Okay, twenty-five. Okay, yeah. Sleepy yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> Magnus is asleep. Um. So yeah, you are successful in putting, um, putting Magnus to sleep. Oh, <laughs> you okay. take him out to a farm and shh, he runs shh, and plays. Nope. You're asleep. You're done. You're asleep. Sleepy. You're asleep. Sleepy time. But Travis isn't asleep. <laughs> Jesse, I can't sleep. I can't sleep on Travis. <laughs> Oh my god, it's getting real. It's getting real. Um, The four of you in the wagon um, are getting fairly close to Fandolin, and you... uh, (laughs) Magnus wakes up, puts his shoes back on. Uh Uh, No, this is actually fairly soon after the sleep spell was cast, so... um, You're still asleep. Sleep lasts for how long? Till I wake him up. (laughs) I don't think that's exact. I think it only la- it works. Says it says ca- it puts him into a magical slumber. There, it doesn't define for it. one minute. What really? Yeah. Oh. Oh God. <laughs> him. No Killing him is like a sleep that lasts a long time. <laughs> um, the four of you in this wagon crest a hill. Um, you're 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 about uh, four or five miles outside of Fandolin at this point. Um, and as you do, you actually uh, see one of the most harrowing signs of, of destruction that Gundren has wrought. Um, everything else has been, you know, he's burned down some trees while, while blazing a path towards Fandolin. But here, um, as you look down, you actually see a convoy of wagons um, that have been completely destroyed, completely burned out. Um, uh, they were like Conestoga wagons, so just sort of the the framing of the wagons remains. Uh, there are a few cinders actually still burning in some of the wood of these wagons. They're they're completely destroyed, and you see laid out next to them uh, a few charred 
uh, bodies that you make out to actually be orcish. Um, so you think that Gundren has sort of exacted some some level of vengeance on uh, orcs, who he is just not a big fan of. Uh, he's an orcist. He really is. He really is a big orcist. He, um, you yeah. realize that when someone is a racist, you don't like call them like blank ist for each person they hate, right? He's still just racist. When did you wake up? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the spell only lasts for a minute, but like Magnus <coughs> actually got very comfortable. So now uh, can we his, can we see Thundren? Gundren? Gundren? No, because the the path has uh has blazed past this this uh wagon. Mm. He did But his, he has not made it to town yet. He did he did you can't tell. You can't really see Fandolin yet. He did his business here and then he managed to keep moving on. Um you uh actually see um that not everybody in this scene is dead. You see four uh, human figures who are sort of picking over the remains, and they have their own uh, wagon with them. They're they're sort of scavenging um, through this this burned out convoy, um, and actually, it's an it's an open wagon that they have, and you can see in the back of it a cage with a adolescent orc uh, boy in it, um, and he's he's locked up, and he's just sitting there. Um, yeah, you're too far away. You're about uh, 80 feet away from the scene, so you can't really uh, hear anything, but you, you get the impression that these are scavengers who are taking whatever valuables they can from this scene. And, and apparently kidnappers. Uh, and, and Killian sees this and says, uh, oh, Jesus. She's like, I know we're in a hurry. It's up to you guys. It's your call. What, what's our call? Whether we stop and help or not. Is there anything to fight? Actually, I think what Besides he's wondering fires. is, is there anything for him to secretly steal when nobody's looking? No. I'm okay, just, Magnus no. rushes over. <laughs> that we should change the name of the podcast to Magnus. Magnus rushes in is, <laughs> is now the name of the Listen, I'm books. playing my character the way you're supposed to. I value action over thought. I rush in to help the boy in the cage. Okay. You rush in and... Uh, Are there still fires burning anywhere? Uh, no, they're, they're, they're very minor fires. You don't need to do any... Uh, Okay. You don't need to, you know, get out the extinguisher or anything. Okay. Um, you rush in and you see these four scavengers. Um, they are dressed in pretty raggedy clothes, but they have, um, you know, swords, daggers, um, some some weapons on them. And uh, one of them turns away from the cart and sees Magnus rushing towards him and says, Oh, hey, guys, yo, hey, slow your roll. Slow your roll, partner. Uh, we're just, we're just picking the bones of this scene. We didn't do any of this. We promise. We're just, uh, trying four honest, you know, fools trying to make a buck, trying to turn a buck in this hard, cold world. Certainly y'all three can sympathize with that. I respect your motivations. We we? don't have a lot of time for this. Give me the boy and we'll be on our way. Oh, Uh, what are you going to do with the orc boy? Huh? You gonna you gonna train him up to be your ward? He's not some pet dog that you can adopt. I know how bad you want one of them. Then why what do you have you? him in a cage? For selling. <laughs> what do you think happens to him after you sell him? That's not my problem. I get the money for selling a boy. Listen, I'm gonna give you to three. We really got a lot to do. He says I'm, a, I'm not exact. I, I, I I'm gonna say some cool shit now. <laughs> he says, "Me and my posse gonna give you to two, and uh, we'll give all, you to all, one." Well, how about this? Zero motherfuckers, and they all draw their weapons. <laughs> cool. I cast thaumaturgy. Right, no, no, it's Wait, it, you got to you got to roll for initiative. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's okay. got him to this Battle point. Team. That you just right. the screen just sort of uh, got like all pixelated, and you heard the dun, and that's how you know that like a. You've just entered into a random encounter. Um, are, do we think that from Magnus taking his nap, that was a short rest to regain hit points? Uh, yes. Yeah, you guys were all on a pretty uh, long ride, so we'll say that counted as a short rest. It was a very restful ride. So you guys can roll hit die? To- Except for the fact that we were following the trail of a flaming door, if it was all real chill. <laughs> um, I rolled a 17 initiative. I did as well. Who has the higher... What are your modifiers? Minus plus two. Mine's minus one. Okay, so Travis goes first. What did Travis have? You guys had the same score, but in the case of a tie, whoever has the highest modifier goes first. Uh, Juice, what'd you get? Fifteen. Okay. 
That was in character. He just said 15 and no one knew why. <laughs> Roll to see if they're unnerved. <laughs> they're shouting numbers. Get out of here. Griff, when you have four opponents like this, do they each get their own initiative roll, or do they just sort of act collaboratively? Uh, I roll an initiative roll for each discrete type of enemy you're fighting. Okay. So if you were fighting some some bandits and a bear and a bugbear, but there were like 14 bugbears, I would only roll one bugbear roll. But right now we're fighting the equivalent of dumpster divers, right? Uh, th- these are uh, actually ruffians, bandits. Ooh. Yeah. These, these people aren't too worried about their carbon footprint mm-hmm. uh, as much as they are, you know, <laughs> plundering, pillaging. Uh, first in the order is actually Killian. Um, and Killian says, uh, let's Wait, keep what did sh- Taco roll? Taco rolled a 15. Okay. 15, I shouted it out loud. Killian got a natural 20. Um, uh, she goes, uh, hey guys, let's try and make this quick. And then she whips out her crossbow and fires uh, a projectile. This is the first time that you've uh, really seen uh, her her giant mega crossbow in action, where it hasn't been sort of stymied by a flaming magic dwarf. Uh, and it fires the bolt the size of uh, a short spear at uh, the lead ruffian that was uh, trying to intimidate you with his countdown. Uh, she rolls a 12... Plus six is 18, which uh, beats their armor class. Uh, and it does, oh God, uh, 14 points of damage. Uh, he, the, the bolt hits him and actually sends him flying back uh, about 10 feet. It is, it is a very powerful uh, blow and he lands prone, uh, but still alive. Uh, next in the order is uh, Travis. Or okay, wait, great. Hold on, wait. I wrote a T. Yeah, that stands for that's Magnus. Okay, I'm gonna two handed battle axe at whichever one's closest to me. Uh, there are uh, two sort of close to the wagon where the thing is locked up, uh, which the is thing? also the where the orc uh, boy is locked up. Um, that's about twenty feet away uh, where the now injured ruffian just landed there's another one uh, that sort of had that guy's back who's probably the closest he's about uh 10 feet out from you great i step up to him two-handed okay. battle axe um oh wait gotta roll the right dice uh 24 oh yeah god and it does 1t 10 plus 4 uh 13 points of damage holy shit yeah as you approach him, he's like, bring it on, tough guy. And then you hit him, and he's like, don't. <laughs> hold up. Oh, hold up. Oh, dang. Oh, dang. Oh, dang. <laughs> Is this Jesco White? Oh, dang. He's alive, but um, but dang. Next in the order is Merle. You got two severely wounded ruffians and the two by the cart that are still full health. Okay. I am going to cast Thaumaturgy. It's a cantrip, which allows my voice to boom up to three times as loud as normal for a minute. And I'm going to yell, there's only four of them. Platoon one, attack from the east. Platoon two, attack from the west. Uh, Which echoes down the hill. The the two full health. Uh, I, I'm going to say you're making an intimidation check. Why don't you actually? Uh, why don't you actually roll that? And I'll give you advantage since you uh, made your voice very loud and uh, uh, believable. Okay, let me check. And these guys are going to make. Uh, we'll say an intelligence check against it. They have minus one intelligence, so that should go fairly poorly. Yep. You said an intelligence check? They're making an intelligence check to yeah, combat your intimidation. your intimidation. Oh, okay. Because you're lying to them, essentially. Uh, nine. Okay. What would be his modifier on an intimidation check? The, uh, intimidation there's an, is one there's of an intimidation skills. skill. Oh. Uh, plus three. So, so 12. 12. They, they only got a four, so that is sufficient. Um... The two, the two ruffians by the cart look at each other. They look at the boss who's lying on the ground with a spear-sized bolt in his stomach and say, what do we do? He's like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I, guess, I, guess, I guess go check it out. 
Um, and so the two ruffians split off to the east and west and, and start running in either direction looking for uh, these, these reinforcements to come. Guys, did you hear that? Did you hear from the hills? There's an army supporting us. I think we're going to win this thing. <laughs> yeah, Taco, definitely. <laughs> Dear sweet Taco. Uh, next in the order is Taco himself, the man, the myth, the legend. I feel like I don't even have to do anything. <laughs> Roll to chill. <laughs> chill check. No, well, uh, I'll go ahead and um, I'll give my little magic missile. Uh, to which one? You got two injured ones, and the other two have have run off. Or they're splits, Phil. I'll uh, I'll do two bolts for one of the injured, and one bolt for the uh, the other one. Really badly injured one. And that's a D. It's a D four plus one. You only roll it once, and that's the result that you use for for all of them. Four. Uh, four damage. Yeah, you don't even uh, you don't yeah. you don't even need two bolts on either of those two dudes. You, okay. they were, they had three and two health respectively, so they're, they are both nixed. Okay. Stevie nixed. These two are. Um, congratulations, you solved my bandit puzzle. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right, we pop over the cage. Say hop in the cart. Check their car real quick. Any good shit? Uh, this is good. Now we own a boy. <laughs> <laughs> no man can own another man, Justin. We freed a boy who's chosen to join us rather than stay out in the woods by himself. He's an orkling. Are you? Are you? So you're freeing the boy. You're freeing the orc boy. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, you you find some keys on one of those two dead bandits, and you pop open the cage, and the orcish boy doesn't seem especially grateful. He sort of barely even acknowledges your. Your presence, and he. So he's a teenager. Yeah, uh, he's, okay. he's moody. He's listening to his his Nirvana tapes, and uh, he just sort of starts to walk away. He just walks away. So he's an emork. Okay, and, bye. Uh, that was pretty good. Uh, <laughs> Killian is like, uh, you know, grateful little. Well, well, wait, that's my Gundren voice. I'm getting groggy already. Um, she says, uh, "Wow, what a what an ingrate, what an ingrate, what a jerk." God, kids these days. Orc kids these days, I tell you. <laughs> Did you know him? Are you kidding? Now who's the orcist? Yeah, do you, oh, do you know, uh, do you know Steven? He's an orc <laughs> He's too. orc too. Hey, I know an orc named Steven. Do you know him? That's what you sound like right now, Taco. We don't have time I, for this. I don't know a Steven. <laughs> MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Oh, hey there, everybody. I'm Guy Branham, and welcome to Pop Rocket, a new weekly show picking over the pop culture we all love to love. With me to talk TV, film, music, and anything else entertaining are journalist Margaret Wappler, academic, writer, and DJ Oliver Wang, digital strategist Winter Mitchell, and comedian Santina Muha. It's an intellectual and incredibly snark-filled discussion about pop culture by five cranky Hollywood 30-somethings. No name-calling, no rudeness, just straight talk and a lot of role-play. I'm only 30-something for another year. Me too. And I don't <laughs> tell anybody I'm 30-something. Pop Rocket comes out every week from MaximumFun.org. <laughs> 